There lies a space in the solar system, full of curiosities and undiscovered mysteries, where worlds made of ice, primordial bodies, and even another planet may reside. As of 2025, less than 10 robotic probes have made it to the outer reaches of the solar system, where the Kuiper Belt resides. And today, our best exploration has been with observations from home. Today we will explore what we know of this part of the solar system and map out its components to uncover what it contains. This video is part of a collaboration with JG Online. Check out his video on gas giant classification at the end of this video. Now, let's go explore the Kuiper Belt. The Kuiper Belt at its simplest is a much larger version of the Asteroid Belt located beyond the orbit of Neptune. To give a scale of its size, the distance from the Sun to the Earth is defined as one astronomical unit, AU for short, or roughly 149 million kilometers. This belt is located between 30 to 50 AU from the Sun, which puts it further than any of the known planets in the solar system. Located here are dwarf planets, comets, space dust, icy bodies made up of frozen volatiles, and possibly many undiscovered and preserved remnants from the beginning of the solar system itself. So, what we have is a ring, or a donut-like structure that is an unfathomably far away part of the solar system, with frozen worlds and near eternal darkness. When you look at it this way, a question arises, why would we want to go both study this region and attempt to travel there? Well to answer that, there's a few things to consider. Being this far out in the solar system, everything is extremely well preserved, so much so that remnants from the formation of the solar system likely still reside here, which means we can get insights into what it was like at formation. It might even reveal some hints on what the composition of the solar nebula was like that existed before the solar system itself. On top of this, we are curious creatures by nature, and exploring new worlds and finding strange new objects is always a fascinating journey. So, if the Kuiper Belt is worth exploring, let's now get into classifying what it is made up of. Due to many factors, including its origins, size, and distance, the Kuiper Belt can be classified into distinct object categories. Let us go over a few of them now. Classical Kuiper Belt objects, also called Cubanos, are objects that do not have any orbital resonance pattern with Neptune meaning that the time it takes for them to orbit the Sun is not related to, or influenced by, the gravitational effects of Neptune. On top of this, they orbit beyond Neptune's orbit and are generally in low eccentricity orbits, in the range of 40 to 50 astronomical units from the Sun. Some examples of Cubanos are quite well known, such as Arakoth, which was visited by the New Horizons mission, Makemake, which is the largest Cubano, and Albion, originally designated as QB1, where the Cubano name comes from. In contrast to non-resonant Cubanos, resonant trans-Neptunian objects share an orbital pattern with Neptune, such as 1 to 1, 2 to 3, 3 to 5, and so on. The orbital resonance of 2 to 3 is thought to be the most common, with most objects falling into this category. The leading theory for so many Kuiper Belt objects falling into an orbital resonance is thought to come from the origins of the solar system itself. When Neptune was migrating to its final orbital plane in the solar system, it influenced the orbits of many objects with the belt along the way. This is thought to be what caused the resonance in the first place. In this class of objects include some of the most famous examples, including Pluto and Haumea. Scattered disk objects are thought to be objects whose orbits have been disturbed by the gas giants over time. This has flung them out into weird and unexpected orbits, ranging anywhere from 30 to 100 astronomical units. Since the orbits in this class have been disturbed, they are essentially random and not resonant at all. They are also thought to form the origins for objects in the Oort cloud and most periodic comets coming into the inner solar system as well. Interestingly, when viewing a diagram of classical versus resonant versus scattered objects, a clear distinction can be seen between all three. In this class of objects exists the most massive Kuiper Belt dwarf planet, Eris. Eris is just a bit more massive than Pluto, but also slightly smaller in diameter. The next class of celestial bodies to look at are the detached objects, whose only gravitational influence comes from the Sun itself. Some of these objects have orbits which are gigantic and extend far beyond the Kuiper Belt itself. There are some fascinating objects here, as their orbits appear disturbed as if by a large object. 
The implication that comes from this is that there could be some sort of an undiscovered planet lurking deep in the outer reaches of the solar system, or from a passing star long ago. The most famous detached object is Sedna, which at its furthest point in its orbit is 937 AU, or 19 times as distant as Pluto. There also exist Kuiper Belt moons, which are thought to be quite common here. Of the six largest objects in this region, all have some number of moons orbiting them. Charon, the largest moon of Pluto, is the most well known and explored of these moons. Finally, there are many hypothetical and undiscovered objects which could be more fantastic or strange than anything we have listed thus far. One of the most intriguing potential objects here is the possible existence of a ninth planet. We already know that a ninth planet did once exist in the Kuiper Belt, Pluto. However, Pluto was relegated to dwarf planet status in 2006. This new ninth planet is predicted to exist roughly 400 to 800 astronomical units from the Sun and could be roughly the same size as Neptune, meaning its discovery could come with extra moons, a ring system or even more. The reason why scientists think it could exist is due to the weird disturbed orbits of many bodies in the Kuiper Belt, which could be explained by the existence of another planet. Another hypothetical object in this region is a second belt located beyond 50 astronomical units. Beyond this distance, the number of objects in the belt rapidly drops to zero, which implies this is the edge of it. However, an observation has come to light highlighting several objects beyond 60 astronomical units, which is suggesting either a continuation of the belt much further out than originally thought or the existence of a second belt, either of which would greatly expand the size of our solar system. The Kuiper Belt could also have many visiting and captured interstellar objects. These hypothetical objects in the region would be areas of scientific interest to explore, as they would give us insights into the chemical composition of different solar systems. Exploration of the Kuiper Belt has already been conducted, with New Horizons visiting two objects in this region, Pluto and Arakov. To reach as far out into the solar system takes a long time. The New Horizons probe was launched in 2006, and despite it becoming one of the fastest ever man-made objects, it still took about 9 years to reach Pluto. The images it sent back of Pluto and Arakov were stunning, delivering new insights into the frozen dwarf planet and the planetesimal. Beyond New Horizons, future journeys to this area of the solar system have only been proposed so far. Some of these include a probe called Persephone, with a mission of travelling to Pluto to orbit the dwarf planet for three years, performing many science missions while over Pluto, including looking for a subsurface ocean on the dwarf planet, which could carry huge scientific implications if discovered. Then, after three years in orbit, it could continue further into the Kuiper Belt to look for more objects to explore along its trajectory. The aptly named Interstellar Probe is a proposed spacecraft with the furthest targets in mind, it would be designed by NASA and launched with the goal of characterizing interstellar space and the heliosphere of our solar system. It would also potentially have flyby targets within the Kuiper Belt, such as Orcus and its moon Van. This probe would be a much improved version of the Voyager probes, with next generation equipment and a lifespan of over 50 years. Finally, a set of two Chinese probes, called Shenzhou, would be launched to explore the heliosphere and the Kuiper Belt in the 2040s with a flyby target of Quayor as well for the first probe, which is a dwarf planet in the Kuiper Belt, which would reveal the first time the dwarf planet is explored in detail. We are still in the early stages of our exploration and understanding of the Kuiper Belt. It remains one of the ultimate frontiers of the solar system, with many mysteries hidden within it. As our understanding and exploration capabilities improve, we are sure to find many incredible and fascinating discoveries from it. As I mentioned before, this video is a collaboration with JG Online. Now that you have made it to the end of this video, go check out JG's video about gas giant classification below and dive into all the fascinating planetary science around it. And as always, thanks for watching.